This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Revel from a galaxy far, far away. So, why don't we get started with the 172 scale Star Wars The Mandalorian Razor Crest. And without further ado, let's get to it. Yo, welcome back my dudes and dudes. That's another unique build from yours truly, Otaku Builder. And if this is your very first time onto this YouTube channel, Welcome! So after finally watching the book of Boba Fett and jumping back to watching season 1 and 2 of The Mandalorian, I felt that the Razor Crest deserves a lot more love and attention because... That beautiful relic got destroyed at the end of Season 2, so we are going to be building the Star Wars The Mandalorian Revel Razor Crest. Now, the level 3 is really important when it comes to this model kit. I'll tell you that later on in the video, but as the first side of the box art shows us, you get really, really extensive amount of detail, both on the landing gear as well as inside the cargo bay, and a nice extensive shot of the Mandalorian himself on the other side of the box art, as well as eight different languages explaining the lore of how this Razor Crest became part of the new Star Wars universe. Very bottom of the box art, you get a nice guide on how to choose what kind of colors that would go great for this Razor Crest, while on the far right, gives you a small glimpse of tools, glues, as well as accessories that you'll need to cut these runners out, which is absolutely great. And I love that Revel goes that extra sensitive detail. And the very top, you get a nice tight shot of the cockpit area that's definitely kind of misconcerning on what the color schemes are on this particular model kit, but let's take a look what's inside the box. If there's one thing I like about Revel is they're very, very specific when it comes to their instruction mode because it is absolutely beautiful. It's definitely welcoming. It encourages you to take this kit to the next level. I absolutely love that attention detail, but tuck away in between pages one and two is the water slide decals. That's right, you heard me correctly. Water slide, not stickers. And these sticker decals are great. Definitely give it a nice chip weather. And in fact, when you apply them onto the Razor Crest with both sides of the hull, love that. But what's really great is page one. It gives you a kind of a glimpse on what you're gonna need to do to prepare yourself when you build this model kit that's super complex. And complexity gets even more extensive when you look at the color chart. It gives you a complete spread on what specific colors you're gonna need to actually paint this Razor Crest, while giving a glimpse of a pink ratio to pull off certain colors if you want to do some extensive details. I love that. Very, very advanced level stuff. Next page you give a nice touch shot of the cockpit, which strangely enough, that doesn't look like Mando at all. It looks a lot like buff feet. Followed by the next page giving you very specific details on which areas you need to glue into place when you connect the actual main body to the lower half body, what areas you need to drill, what areas you need to paint, and at the same time, it gives you a glimpse at areas that you need to do some custom painting, such as the action base and also the main engine assembly. And then last and finally, you have the complete guide on where you need to apply specific heat areas of particular colors, and at the same time, some water slide decals. So that wraps up everything we'd expect for inside the instruction manual. Now let's talk about the most important thing, the runners. First set, you're definitely going to get an extensive amount of detail from the inside the hall followed by the top section of the actual razor crest and my dudes this is an incredible amount of surface detail this is absolutely bonkers and it gets even more crazier on the actual main hall for the razor crest itself i love the panel lining i love the action bonus parts of details i love the surface detail i just my goodness it feels so good to build another star wars kit and that detail gets even more even pronounced around the engine assembly underneath the wings and even the actual bulk of the engines have a great deal of surface detail it's absolutely great but what's really interesting about this model kit, the clear runners. You only gonna get a small selection of clear runners that are gonna be primarily focused around the cockpit area. So when you actually glue them into place, make sure you use like a really thin glue that doesn't create any kind of fogging up issues and you should be good. Well, it's been a while since I built another Star Wars model kit. The time has finally come. If there's one thing I love doing when it comes to building starships, it's actually one up in myself to see if I can improve my techniques from previous builds to try to perfect them on newer model kits. And this is an excellent candidate to really try this stuff out. So in this particular build, I want to try to experiment with fiber optic lighting. Now, what I want to try to experiment with fiber optic lighting is inside the actual main cargo hole as well as the cockpit area. But I need to evaluate what areas can require a great deal of light blocking. Now, what's actually going to be really important is areas that are actually too thin, areas that are actually going to be requiring glue or even areas that are going to try to impact one another it's very essential to make sure i block all the lighting inside the actual main body as well as outside the exterior part but definitely want to tackle the actual main interior part first before attacking all the main core parts afterwards so i'm gonna work on these two first
Alright, now that the main parts are finally done, it's now time to put a lot of love and attention in the cockpit area. So what I'm basically going to be utilizing is fiber optic wiring. Now I would not really recommend this for anyone to do this particular technique. It's actually very, very difficult to pull this off because these wires right here are so darn thin, they will break very, very easily. And this is like my third attempt at work with fiber optics before. So as you see here, I've already took the liberty of drilling out key areas that I want to help illuminate areas like around the control panel. Some areas there are white, some areas there are red. You know, they give like a nice color diversity in there. But I'm definitely gonna use the smallest Dremel that I have in my selection to actually pre-drill holes on other areas like around the door, as well as the control panel, or even areas around the other sections around the ship.
right, now that these two are finally permanently glued together, it's now time to install the actual fiber optic lighting for these fiber optics. Now, traditionally you could normally use a five to a three millimeter bulb to illuminate the fiber optics, but since I had a handful of spare fiber optic side glowing cables lying around, I end up gluing actually chip LED lights behind there, close it off inside of a shrink tube cavity, and then interconnect it to specific parts. This works were actually really great. All right, my dudes and dudes, we have reached the most difficult part in this model kit, and that is actually installing LED lights inside both engine compartments. Now, the LED light system on this is gonna be pretty complex, so I'll try my best to explain what I'm gonna be doing. After watching season one and two multiple times, I noticed that there's navigational lights both on top, as well as underneath the actual engine compartment, as well as a very complex LED light system for the actual engine itself. Now, as you can see here on this particular runner, I've already taken the liberty of drilling out the holes, but as you can see here, when you buy the actual kit, those areas out aren't hollowed out. So you're actually gonna need to actually use a small little drill to actually drill each individual section out so that way you can actually get the right kind of effect like you would see on the TV show. My God, it is so complex. <laughs>
All right, now that this guy is ready to be painted, it's now time to do something very, very complex, and that is actually painting this guy as a whole. Now, what I mean by that is, I've already taken the liberty of painting the both front and back of this engine assembly, but in order to actually paint this guy as a whole, everything needs to be permanently glued in, and that includes the LED lights. So, I need to make sure that the navigational lights need to be already installed in there, while at the same time, the actual fiber optic lighting to help illuminate those two lights are already set up, followed by a mega LED light that's gonna be a flickering effect inside the front part of the engine, while installing a mega LED light behind the engine assembly, which is being blocked by a clear orange piece to actually create that nice flicker effect the way how you see in the TV show. But how am I going to pull off that effect? It seems very complex, very difficult to pull off, right? That's when it comes to using my photography diffusing clear pieces. I had a spare piece of orange piece lined around, and this is going to be a great candidate to pull off this effect. It's not too dense to the point where it's going to give me very bright orange, but that's when to me a clear orange becomes the great candidate to help pull off this effect. I'll end up putting a small little dab of this stuff on top of the actual LED to help illuminate the way it's supposed to be. Alright my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this build and man oh man, it feels so good to build another Star Wars kit. I mean, I enjoyed building the kits I did in the past on my YouTube channel, but there is something that is extremely refreshing and exciting to build something that's different from your X-Wing or your Y-Wings and your Millennium Falcons, your TIE Fighters. The Razor Crest is a fantastic machine and the artistic charm and the style of it definitely harkens back to old school Star Wars. And I can personally speak for myself, I was a bit hesitant to build anything Star Wars related because Star Wars kits don't do well for viewership on this channel because after what happened with the reboot trilogy series. But the Mandalorian has changed that and when season two wrapped up, I always wanted to build a model kit and I was well known that there was Mandalorian kits on the marketplace like at the end of last year, but they were being sold for $70. But the one thing I like about this particular kit is its personality. And I was very, very lucky that Revel was actually starting to ship these kits out when they did at, at the early of 2022. And it was worth every dime to buy this kit, man. It's great. But it definitely has its drawbacks. For starters, the action base. It's not really great. It's a little low for my taste. And you really lose all that great surface detail underneath the hull of the ship. You know, it's really, really gone. But fortunate enough for me, I had a spare USS Enterprise refit kit lying around in my office. And I ended up using the action base dome as an alternative. Sure, you gotta do some customization or drilling, but it definitely gets the job done. Another thing that was very concerning about this model kit is seam lines. They're very, very noticeable when you put on the chrome look on the whole entire hull. So if, when you do this yourself, make sure you send them down, apply a good deal like putty, whether it's Vallejo or Tamiya putty. You know, you should be good, but it's definitely uh, an eyesore for those who are very particular when it comes to seam lines. Me, personally, they don't bother me as much, but I know other people might find it. But I think the wonderful thing I like about this kit um, besides its drawbacks was just the fun factor and like I mentioned earlier on the video this is a level 3 kit which means it is difficult it does require a lot of time and patience to really make this guy look the way how you would see in the TV show but most importantly it is a kit that will definitely challenging you to really up your game and 
it was extremely refreshing to build a fully chrome build and I've never imagined I would do something quite like that and after messing up a couple of times with the Mandalorian model kit to really pull off that chrome in effect, I felt that I pulled it off just perfectly with this particular Razor Crest because I was understanding the difference between working with two different types of metallic paints. I barely dabble with the actual copper paint, but really using the copper paint successfully around like the engine like coils, I don't know what they call them. Uh, it was just fun, and then really understanding how to work on my light bleeding and pull it off fiber optic lighting, which by the way, it's very, very time consuming, but when you get the effects done just right, the results are just fantastic. I mean, just really, really fantastic. But I would jump back again to another area that's really concerning about this model kit. For example, trying to interconnect the actual main bridge to the main body of the hull of the ship was troublesome. There were areas where when you do lock it into place, it would end up breaking the model kit into two pieces. I had to disassemble this area twice, and this kit is very sensitive when it comes to putting it together. Everything needs to be perfectly aligned. Everything needs to be glued specifically in the right kind of angle, but most importantly, you cannot rush this kit. You literally have to take your time when constructing it, and I think that is a great testament when it comes to building kits like this compared to other kits I build in this channel. You're taking your time, you're learning new techniques, you're improving on the techniques that you mess up in the past. I mean, that's the one I think I like about this hobby. You know, it is such a learning curve for you to get better at the things that you like so much because when you fail, you're learning. Now, regardless of how many people tell you that you're failing on something when it's your first time working with a particular product, you're still going to make improvements down the road. And I felt that I really improved upon it with this particular build, and I loved it. Now, time will tell if I will build another Star Wars kit, but after the success of Season 1 and 2 and the brief appearance of Mandalorian in the Book of Boba Fett driving off with the Naboo fighter, Oh yeah, I'm building another one. <laughs> now, I know the biggest question you're asking yourself, is this kit worth the purchase? Without a doubt, this kit is worth every dime, but it's extremely difficult to find right now. Like the most you can find is under $80. It's being sold for like $180 to like $200 on Aries or on, on eBay and other websites. It's really, really difficult to find a right fit for this kit for people that want to build this. I know that Hasegawa is doing their version. Chances are Bendai will be doing another version of this ship in the future, but if you get your chance, please, please pick up this kit. You will not be disappointed. But as always, thank you dudes and dudes for watching this video, and like, comment, and share, and subscribe, and I will see you dudes and dudettes on the next build.